Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? Uh, it took us a little while to get on, <laughs> but we're, but we're on, uh, I'm, uh, all, uh, all, okay, you all good? connected, you, you all, all connected, you, you all connected. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's been a, uh, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a hard couple of days, mm-hmm. but we're, uh, we're back and we're running here, so, yeah. uh, so welcome everybody. And I know there's any little thing that goes <laughs> awry, it just messes up the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here we are at uh, 10,000 feet without a parachute. Oh, and, uh, my goodness. Welcome to Talk Real, Get Real, guys. Um, we have a really good topic. Usually we're, uh, we're, we're talking very gently about uh, martial art communities. and um, Gently. <laughs> gently, <laughs> not, gently. Not so gently. Uh, uh, talking about martial arts, the communities, and um, everything about it. And we have all these people online already saying hello. Uh, Chris Roman, what's up, brother? Hope everything hey. is well. The Beast. From down south, um, so yeah, we're gonna be uh, talking about um, mindful martial arts today. So it's gonna be pretty cool, and uh, I'm gonna be showing my intelligence. <laughs> I hope. You got some big words. Yeah, I got it. I got some big words, and I, I got my cue cards and everything yeah. else. So uh, if you see my eyes going back and forth, then that's what you know that I'm doing. So uh, let's get ready for another talk. Real, get real. Talk real, get real. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. I hope they're ready. Yeah. All right, guys, pay attention. And uh, here we here are, he little bobbleheads. Uh, All right, so let's. Oh, uh, Zongshu sure jumped jumped on right on, right quick, man. Yeah, hello Zongshu. Sure. How are you, sir? Hope everything is well, yeah. and thank you very much for a uh, a wonderful weekend. I really appreciate you inviting me, uh, and I know what it means uh, to be invited to something like that. So thank you very much. Uh, it means the world, and thank you for always uh, watching and keeping a a watchful eye out. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate it. With the deadly. Uh... The Deadly Phoenix Eye. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna forego. Actually, no, we're not. We're not. We're not. We gotta. We definitely gotta. We gotta pay some bills, man. Yeah, we gotta pay some bills. So uh, <laughs> so because we gotta pay some bills. Yes. Uh, uh, fifth annual, <laughs> August third, two thousand nineteen. Yes. Um, Masters Unite. Definitely uh, give a call out. Give a shout out to uh, Shehan Andrew, and uh, he will. Uh, Talk to you about it. Uh, it's going to be a great, uh, a great venue. There's going to be a lot of masters uh, doing their martial arts there and mm-hmm. sharing. And it is a, uh, it's a place where everybody can, uh, you know, throw down their uh, their walls of martial arts and come together as one family. So I think it's going to be a really good, uh, really good institution uh, for training for that day. So guys, definitely take a look at it. Again, it's uh, it's the fifth uh, fifth anniversary, August third, two thousand nineteen. Mm-hmm. Definitely don't miss out on it. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful show. So definitely be a part of that. Uh, we definitely have to do a big shout out to on the man. Yeah, go ahead, brother. The myth, the legend. <laughs> JP, 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 Draft. the pop locking, tattoo drawing, non-stopping, the non-stopping, <laughs> <laughs> simulator having, birthday given, birthday given. <laughs> My man JP, oh, he is such a wonderful brother. Uh, he has uh, such a big heart. Uh, he he just gives and gives and gives and gives and gives, and he he gave us the the tools that we can use to have this wonderful talk show, so people can enjoy and we can educate educate the public and do it gently, I guess. You know, <laughs> <laughs> gently or not, gently. We're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna ease in, ease in nice ease and gentle. Yeah, yeah. But we gotta be real. We're gonna be real. You know? <laughs> Right. Real and gentle. Real and gentle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> next is Cradle Con. Uh, yeah, Volume 2, 2019, June yeah. 1st and June 2nd. It's something you don't want to miss. Yeah, just like uh, any kind of uh, any kind of con uh, convention, it's going to be great. It's uh, We're going to be doing lion dance. If you haven't seen traditional Chinese lion dance before, definitely be a part of it. Mm-hmm. We're doing a kung fu demo. Yep. Uh, we'll be doing stuff by our booth. And uh, we'll be giving out prizes and shirts and all sorts of stuff. So, yes, I am tempting you to come by the the booth and hang out, say hello, Mm -hmm. uh, and and check us out. We'll give you... uh, We'll give a lot of a lot of information. We're giving out cards, giving out shirts, uh, giving out knowledge because knowledge is king. That's right. And uh, we're going to be having a, a really good time there. So don't miss out. Again, um, Seamus uh, gives a great con. He does a great event, yeah, and it's something you definitely, definitely do not well want to miss. Well organized, 
Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, really stuff. just just out of the box. So definitely check that out, guys. So those are all the people that I want to uh, give a shout out to. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we have so much. Look at all the stuff that I... Wow. Yeah, dude, no joke. So we're going to start off right now with... Uh, with a cool little background, and if it doesn't work, I'm sorry. Yeah, Ooh. isn't that nice? Welcome to my mind. <laughs> Notice all the empty spaces. Uh, let me <laughs> and, take you on a journey. And just balls. <laughs> just balls rolling around. <laughs> and look, they're gold. I didn't even I didn't even put it to I didn't even put it to use that. I didn't even nice. connect does, that. Isn't that uh, cool? Does this have music on it? I don't think it has any music. I hope it doesn't. I don't think so. I don't hear nothing. No. So, you no know, music. I tried to make sure it had no music so yeah. we weren't going to be overpowered by anything by here. sound or anything? Yeah. So, um, this is just something that for us to talk talk one-on-one -on -one with and, uh, cool, cool, yeah, cool. set up the background here. We got a really cool background. Uh, and, yeah, I was a little busy. I was definitely a little busy. Oh, you got to be on this page. Ah, right? why'd it jump? Why'd it jump, man? It why'd it, it jump? It's just, it does that. Where are we? All right. So we have this. So this is what we're gonna do for right now, because we got lots to do. So we're gonna just do that. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, welcome, welcome everybody. Ooh. Welcome to the show. So today. Kind of like uh, Sesame Street, kind of. <laughs> hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you want Sesame Street? Yeah. All right. Let's uh. let's start with some some pictures from Sesame Street. Nice. So here we go, guys. The mind. The mind is a terrible thing. Mm. Mm. So, this is your brain on drugs. This is this is your brain <laughs> on martial arts. So, how can observatory teachings help us deal with the respond to threat? So, so I'm, you, you put it up there. Oh, we didn't even do that. Yeah, observatory. Look at that. Uh, Look at me now. Uh, how can observatory teachings help us deal with and respond to threat? So uh, we're talking. What 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 does that mean? What does that mean? Try saying that fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what we're looking to do is we're looking to understand. Uh, we always, we're, we're working with, with punching, kicking. We're working with fighting. We're working with drills. We're working with self-defense. We're working with forms. What is all of this for? How does this help us? So on a, on a, a mindful understanding, the, the observatory understanding of what we're doing is the more that we observe, the more that we watch, the more that we understand, the more that we can respond to the threat of what's happening mm, right and, uh, i guess identify the threat absolutely right. right so these are all the things that we're going to be there's going to be lines of of words coming on next ah, right so, so we got layers you've yeah, got layers <laughs> like onions so so how can we be observing how could we we the observatory teachings that we learn through the martial arts how could that help us deal and respond right to the threats of what's happening well, i guess like, on the outside it goes back to basic when you're when you're first learning and how do you learn? You learn by watching. Yeah. So the, the instructor does a form. How does an animal and, learn from its parents? Right. right? And then you copy the form. Exactly. So that's observatory. So uh, how do we train it? Dude, you, dude, you, you, you like this, right? Yeah, man. So check it out. I told you I was in here for like three hours, dude. <laughs> so, and, and that's rough for me. So how do we train it? Okay, you're a martial artist. You're already training it. You're already training it inside the classroom mm -hmm. as long. Here we go. <laughs> You've got to put this in here. Here right? we go. As long as the teacher is doing his or her job, yes. as long as the teacher yes. is is showing you techniques and not sitting there and telling you what to do, as long as the teacher is showing you techniques so you can understand the techniques firsthand. And this is the, the other part of the equation that sometimes gets lost in certain schools gives you the realistic sense of how it's going to work practical practical practi the practicality of the situation not just the movements but the practicality of the situation and an example that uh c Ortiz gives is that you know we're in the guan and you know you're going to fight and you get that comfortable uh atmosphere even though you you know you're getting punched and kicked but out in the street it doesn't go down like that no, normally there's what there's cussing, there's pushing, there's all that kind of just psychological stuff that builds up before even the first punch is thrown, and he gives you you know your training has to be able to learn to deal with that that on that level on that level yep in yep. order to be able to respond the way you need to respond absolutely so we're observing so how do we how do we learn this this ob the <laughs> observatory teachings <laughs> how do we how do we learn that so we learn that 
we're already learning that in the martial arts school. So this, what do schools teach us? This is one of the main things that the, a school, a martial arts school should be teaching as long as the teacher is, is, is understanding and showing these applications as they go along, right? Well, the next thing is, is what is a technique of gentle application, right? What? Yeah, so think about it. What is a technique of gentle application? Understanding and observing. How can we do this? How can we teach ourselves, right? And how can we teach ourselves to understand gentle application? So gentle application is is being in a place, you're walking into a situation, right? And gently maneuvering yourself. Now, see, I don't know if anybody else does this, but me being a martial artist for 38 years, I walk into any kind of a restaurant. I walk into, uh, right? I get, I get what you're saying. So you saying. understand what I'm I saying? What so, saying. So, I get what you're saying. So what is the technique of gentle application? Gentle application is putting yourself in, in a position. position where you're comfortable, where you know if something happens or something throws down, you're already in... In, in ready mode. You're in ready mode. And I know it's it's so stupid. It's It almost yeah. sounds like you're neurotic or you're... Uh, Paranoid. Well, no. Well, but, they, well, you know, we, we, you know, look at the news now. So you can, it's hard to go to any kind of venue now. So now you got people shooting up movie theaters. Hell yeah. You got people shooting up uh, 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 concert halls. You got people shooting up mosques, you know. And these are supposed to be places that are supposed to be safe and secure. And this is why I always said we always uh, relinquish our security to somebody else instead of us making sure that Ooh. we have that security yeah you know and take care of, and be aware of that security so i, I like that because yeah. that is part of that understanding of see? gentle application see, a, i like that a man. jew's not so stupid i like that us man. jews are pretty strong <laughs> we're pretty okay I right like that. so we have all this uh we have all these people up here like yep situational awareness yep. right it's being aware of your surroundings, surroundings. And right, police officers Cubs do it every day, and as part, of, as part of their training. Yep. You know? And so when they when they go up to a situation, they don't just run out of the car and say, "Hey, hey, hey, what's going on?" They have to assess because they don't know who they're running up on. The person may just pull out a jimmy and just start slicing people, or they don't know if they got a, a weapon and things like that. So that is part of their training: is situational awareness, how so, to assess it. So gentle application, right? So gentle application is putting yourself in a place. So yeah, definitely observing what's going on. But learning how to always put yourself in a good place um, where you know where you can handle whatever comes your way at mm -hmm. that particular time. And that is part of the training that you that should, you should be, be getting in, <laughs> in a martial arts In a real environment. martial arts school. Yes. Yes. Um, next one. Whoa. So what is, what is mental preemptive attack? So this is, again, this is the next level of what's going on. So this is like the levels you get before anything jumps off. Exactly. So ah. right so you're, ge you're gently gently applying yourself and putting yourself in a position whether it's a high ground, whether it's a corner of a room, whatever it is. Um, I know and I know this sounds really stupid, but any time that I walk into a restaurant, um, let's see. No matter oh, where sure. I go, the first thing I look, look for is where, where the, the exits, exits are. are. Yes, God sir. bless. God yes, bless. Sir. And that's that's why you're one of my instructors. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I walk into a restaurant, and I know this is a little weird and wacky, and it might not be to anybody else or, or martial artists in here, but when I walk into a restaurant, I never have my back to the door. No. I never have my back to the door. No. There was a shooting. There was a shooting down the road at IHOP. Yes. Right? The Very bloods, recently. Right? Very and recently. You know what? He if just my, walked in and just saw who he, did, he wanted to see and just and didn't shot. care, and just, didn't and, care yep, and just about popped, the people around yep, him. And didn't popped off. So if you think about this, you know, if your back's to the door, you'd never have known what would have happened, mm -hmm. right? And you're probably the first one to get it. Right. So it's always smart, especially in today's day. We're learning martial arts and we don't leave the martial arts at the martial arts school. No. We bring the martial arts with us. Everywhere. Everywhere you go. All the time, when you're driving, when you're you're hanging out, when you're watching a movie, when you're in your backyard, mm -hmm. you are always turned on. You now, are not turned off. A little comment here. So now people say, "Oh well, you you you, you have your place to relax, and you you know you don't you want to be paranoid." You know, but again, you got to remember. Now we're living in the era 21st century. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So these kind of concepts are not new. This is the kind of concepts that people lived with in feudal China, Japan. In the 1800s in the Old West, that are still that are still, still that, that they're still viable. Because, third world countries are still living yeah, like because that because you, you couldn't what you couldn't put on your cell phone and call uh, and call the police. You know, it took them like three days to get there. <laughs> 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 you know? 
So you had to you had to handle stuff as it went down. Yeah, you had man. to know shit was popping when it was popping yeah. and be able to handle stuff that's going down. And now uh, we're teaching this, but this is stuff that's not new. Yeah, and again, third world countries. I you know when I visited um, when I visited Thailand and I visited the Philippines, um, you know. You got people standing out of like their outside grocery stores with shotguns. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna get shot for some milk. So you know, so it's over it's some change. Yeah, over <laughs> some change. Keep the change. I'm good. Yeah. You know, but so, uh, and the guy that's holding the shotgun got three teeth in his mouth. Yeah. So you know what I mean. Yeah, he, so he's ready to pop off. Yeah. So yeah. you gotta, you know, you really gotta, you really gotta put stuff into perspective, and that's why I wanted to to talk about this today. So, would you say the p- mental preemptive attack is Chris Roman, he's he's a beast. Oh, he's he's, a, he's on that side. He right? is an animal. This he's guy. A, said, don't, don't be get, a sheep, or get complacent, get, right? Yeah, tactical mindset. Yeah, man, twenty four seven. Yes, um, that's yeah. that's I have it. <laughs> <laughs> I have it. So would you say the preemptive mind? I I call it. I'm sorry. I call it the Batman motive. The Batman contingency. Yeah, yeah, the the Batman <laughs> motivation. That's yeah. that's you know that's my my Batman my Batman paranoia. <laughs> you know, so uh, I just don't have the money. <laughs> Uh, so the mental preemptive attack, I get. Would you say that if you knew somebody, the threat was coming, like Sir, like Sir John Moses told me that, yeah, like he's already mentally plotting in his or head what's what's, what's, go, what's about to happen yep, and, and where you need and, to be and where you need to be absolutely. And if something happens, uh, all right, I need to strike there, I need to strike there right. before but, something even pops off. Right, but you can't do this. I'm pointing to the screen like you all can right. see what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> That's what's wrong with this. So. <laughs> No, uh, it's uh, that way. Uh, damn. Uh, uh, this way. Uh, that way. <laughs> that way. So what, what's a mental? So in order to do the pre-mental, the pre-mental, like like pre-mental hormones, <laughs> right? The mental preemptive strike attack, right? In order to, to in order to do this, in order to understand and direct what you need to do, you need to understand the gentle application of placing yourself in a good position in the martial arts so that's this whole thing is is really really important i hope everybody's getting an idea what i'm trying yes. to get out uh my comment on this particular I, i'm pointing to the screen like there you, know you what go I'm talking about. on what's up on brother that, on, I'm God damn the out my way. Uh, on this particular topic is uh what i learned is mine the so, mind so this but also learning uh like in the martial arts the quickest thing that's going to take an opponent down uh, where to strike, how to place your place your body, uh, because as soon as you put your hands up or do something, people know. Oh, he's a martial artist. Wow, you know? Zong Shir just wrote. Zong Shir wrote something. Yeah. yeah. So he said, unfortunately, you may see something before it happens and think that you're planning what you're going to do, but when it pops off, something totally different comes out, and you, and it never comes out the way you plan it, but it does come out. Yes, Absolutely. Sir. So it, yes, it might sir. not look pretty. So. <laughs> Zongshur said, you're prepared, and you're more apt to do something than if you didn't do all these steps, and you weren't prepared, and you're going to get your ass whipped. Yeah, so it's better to be prepared than not to be prepared for it, and even if it doesn't pop off the way you planned it, make sure it pops off and works in your in your favor. Yes. And again, gentle application, putting yourself in a position where you know your surroundings, and even if you don't know them when you first walk in, like Zongshu said, you know, you look at all the exits. For mm-hmm. me, I make sure my back is never towards yeah. the door. I I I scan. I do like yep. the, I do like the uh, the RoboCop the, the Robo-Cop scan. Co- yeah, the RoboCop <laughs> scan. So I'm scanning. Uh, it's like, you oh. walk in, it's like <laughs> yeah. Oh, this guy's hanging out with his girlfriend. <laughs> oh, this guy's drinking. Oh, this guy's causing issues. Oh, this guy's you know. So he said, you must always have the, the right, right mindset, mindset with the right intent. With the right intent. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so here, this is. This is Ooh, you like that? I like that. That's the only thing I can find with mind boxing. <laughs> <laughs> so so mind boxing is the next topic of what we're talking about here. So we were talking about t- today's a little bit about the mind, right? So why do we do martial arts? Now mm. there's a there's a million this different is a broad topic. Yeah. Here, man. So man, this there's a, a statement. There's a million different statements, and I'm gonna add this in right now because I don't want to go off on a tangent. Mm-hmm. But we're training our neurons to fire faster. Now, in the most basic essence of what we're learning, we're teaching ourselves how to be how to be good technicians mm-hmm. in, in in neutralizing a situation. And also for the mind, 
how to react to situations of course faster so, because you know if you have to think it's too late too late it's way too late right so trades that's why we're that's why this is called mind boxing right yes. so training our neurons to fire faster sitting in the mirror and working our drills sitting in the mirror and throwing our techniques throwing mm. our punches throwing our kicks a million times a bazillion times over and over again always always repetition mm -hmm. because you're teaching your body to understand how it should be moving. And not only are you teaching your body, but in the mirror, as you're watching your body move, you're picking up certain body language that your body's giving off mm -hmm. that you don't even, you're not even aware of, that when you see it somewhere else, you start to understand yeah. what's happening. And I'll, and I'll give you one further. You know, training in the mirror or doing your kato, your forms, a lot of people do it and you can tell that it's empty because they don't have the bright preemptive mindset, mm. right? Because whenever you tell me to do forms, when you do a form, you're what? Fighting. You're fighting. You're fighting in your forms. You're fighting in your shadow boxing, right? So mm -hmm. you're training your mindset as if you're in combat. So now... Because if you, you're not, you're wasting your time. Right. So you're already training yourself as like, when I put my hands here, or put my hands here, I'm in a com I'm in combat mode. So your mind is already being programmed we that a, there's a threat. We got a lot of people, man. Oh, damn. Them a wow, I'm this really, is a good topic, I'm man. I'm really if happy. I, I, so check this out. You ready? So training our neurons to fire faster. This is, so this is not the only reason why we do martial arts, okay? There's a million and one reasons, and I don't want to start getting into like, we'll be here all night talking about this, but training our neurons to fire faster so that we could be more more proficient martial artists, more proficient fighters, more proficient, I don't want to, I, I don't want to use the killer word, right? But more proficient martial artists um, to, to neutralize our opponent and mm -hmm. everything else, right? Um, so, Mr. Roman, what do you say? He say, your mind always reverts back to your training and skill level in a high, adre high adrenaline incident. Yep. Train as you fight. That's right. This is the next topic. So, the next Ooh. thing we're talking about is activating mirror neurons. Do you what? know what mirror neurons are? Um, neurons you see in the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know what this was either. So, um, so I was ex explain, explain, so, explain. Activ um, activating mirror neurons. So let's think about this. Um, you guys are sitting down in the TV show, right? You're watching the raid or the raid two, mm. right? And you're sitting next to your girl and you're hanging out. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you watch somebody throw a kick or throw a punch in the in the in the movie, and you go like this, and you accidentally elbow your girl in the face, <laughs> right? Right? And she starts yelling at you, yeah, right? Yeah, right? that crowd! Right? Or you're watching it and you're going like this and you're moving out of the way and you're ducking. And yes. what that is, is that's what they call mirror neurons. Uh. Mirror neurons are neurons that react to both something that's physically happening to you or something you visually see. Uh. So it's either happening or it's not happening to you, but those neurons still fire. That's cool. So, ah! That's cool. Let's see, if I do this, I'm stupid. No. If I do this, I'm the smart Jew. <laughs> These are my smart glasses. Oh, goodness, you've been Franklin's. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we want to activate our, our, our mirror neurons. And by training and by observing people working out and everything else mm. and by being part of it and by being part of and sparring and everything else, mm. you're part of what's happening. And the more that you train in this, your body starts to change. The neurons in your body start to change and they start to activate whether you're part of it or not. And when you start to watch movies and you're reacting when the movie's happening, that's a good sign. Yeah. That means those neurons are going to fire whether you're aware of it or not. Mm -hmm. It's going to fire automatically, right? And this so, is what we call that 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 uh, muscle memory we talk about, right? Yes. Muscle memory. I, I, I have a little different name for it because I... I, I do that watching boxing. We all do, dude. Uh, I watch my wife. My wife grabs my hands and keeps my hands from keep smacking <laughs> around, from, from moving around. You know. Uh, so when I when I, I I don't call it this in class. Where I teach the same thing is now you now you'll be able to do that and see and see and smart. Go, hmm. <laughs> so my my take on it, I call it conditional response. Ooh, same thing. Conditional response. Same thing. So the same thing like Sifu says. How do you know how to block that straight punch or that cross or that? that? You practice the pre the the pre range movement, mm, like right? a form, like a form or a self defense technique or something like that, and you go over and over and over and over and over again, so you understand where your hands are supposed to be. Typically, in a certain situation, when somebody throws a technique, now this is the kicker. Now you have to take it, and then we practice uh, drills we call no mind drills. Where the person can throw. So oh, that oh that's right? the next one. That's <laughs> all right. Keep going. Keep so going. So the person can throw it, but throw it in a random sense where you don't know 
where the technique is coming from. Because people are like, oh, well, you already know where the technique's going, so that's why it looks so good. Yeah, you get so upset when and you, you get pissed that off. stuff on YouTube, right? right? <laughs> because, you know, I'm showing a demonstration, but when we practice in class, we practice no mind drills. So the, the, your opponent, you, you, know, you don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. But it's coming. It's coming. So you have to have an understanding of the mirror neuron so the eyes are focusing. So uh, that whole wives' tale or thing where it said the master knows where you're moving before you even move. Yeah. You know, that whole, the whole thing and stuff like that. Uh, make your reaction more natural. Well, you know what it is? The, the mirror neurons make your reactions lightning fast. Mike, so um, the by by training all the time and by understanding what's happening, um, whether you're thinking about it, because the minute you think about a technique, mm. somebody's already hitting you, yep. right? So it's too we late. we treat and here we go. We train to forget to remember, right? Mm. So we're training to remember the technique, to forget it, to remember it again. I know that sounds really ridiculous, but if you think about it, you're training it, you're training it, you're training it, you move on to something else. Now you've threw that punch a million times, right? And now it's 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 locked in the subconscious. Now you go sparring, somebody throws a technique that resembles what you were practicing, and all of a sudden your mirror neurons fire before you even realize what's happening because they see what's happening because the because you've trained. taught you've taught and you've trained your muscles to fire off mm -hmm. and your visual your your visual acuity gets better and all of a sudden your timing seems to mm -hmm. be impeccable and actually movement quicker and your hands seem to move in the spots where they're supposed to move yeah now this takes training this takes training you know because when it happens your nature, your reaction time action. actually gets faster and what Sifu was talking about is that firing that delay gets less that takes training that's actually been scientific documented for people who do this type of training. Yep. So it's not something that people can do right off the fly because we can teach you a technique, but without that type of training, you're not going to have that that reaction to react where you need to be in the hand being this, yeah. in that in that spot when it needs to be. So that takes a lot of training, a, ton, a lot of drills, uh, real-time techniques, no mind drills. Real-time techniques. Yes. Real-time techniques. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the next one. Next one. Here we go. Ooh. Mind reading, right? So obviously we're not mind reading or anything like that, but knowing body movements. So by understanding, wow. So Sigung uh, Mariano is on hey, here. Hey, Pian. Uh, Pian, hope everything is well. Thanks for coming on. Thank Thanks you for, for watching. watching. So uh, again, so mind reading. So obviously mm. we're not mind reading, but knowing body movements. And that's why I put that in mm. those little, little quotes, quotes. The little quotes, right? So knowing body movements is exactly what Sifu was saying. And this goes back to activating uh, mirror neurons, right? Mm -hmm. So by understanding or watching certain body movements that you learn in class, your body already starts to move in the position that makes it comfortable to fire off a technique. And you can start to learn to anticipate things that your opponent going to do. So this was a skill that I wanted to acquire that I saw you do and I saw Shirja Moses do. They said, all right, get in the fighting stance. Oh, you're going to throw this, you're going to throw that, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do this. And then you look at it like, oh, how can, how's he, how's he going to know? How's he, know? how's he know I'm going to do that? My reading. How's he know? <laughs> you know? Because you, you spent years and years and years sparring, fighting, competition, so you can pick up those subtle movements and know what somebody's going to do just by the way they hold their body, just by the way they hold their stance, just by the way they twitch certain ways. It's like, yep. oh, he's going to throw that kick. Yeah, where the body is, where yep. the body weight is, where it's distributed, um, if they're leaning forward, if they're leaning back. So all these things, your body, your mind is processing and quick, quickly and probably quicker, yes. quicker than what you think it's doing. Now, this is something that, oh, everybody should, you know, but I said, you know, an instructor will only be able to teach you this if they have lots of experience in competition or in combat and stuff like that, because it's not something that you could just readily teach people. You know what I mean? You have to be, I, my opinion, you have to have experience. experience in the arena of, if it's competition or whatever, you know, to, to be able to, to convey that to somebody, to teach that to somebody, because it's not an easy thing to teach somebody. Be very careful when people start talking about, oh, well, I'm certified, and all my instructors are certified, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you know, certified is fine. I, I can I can certify him. I, I, can, I, I, I can be certified I, I can, in the thing, can, five point palm death exploding heart technique. technique. <laughs> I'll write about a certificate. <laughs> He's certified, yeah. right? So certification means jack. 
Certification means nothing. Certified and experienced is mm. something completely different. Mm. Now, if you're going to be if you're going to be saying, "Okay, this guy is certified, he should be certified and experienced." So to me, being certified and experienced means more than just certified certified cuz certified is just theory. And sometimes some people are certified in a couple of weeks mm. and they still don't know what to yes. do. Yes. You know, so <laughs> This is because we don't want to discourage people from taking seminars and getting certified. No, certain no, that's but not what I'm saying. If you certify for a certain amount of hours to, to that you've learned a certain skill or material, then that's what I prefer. I I have 50 hours Amen. of learning of learning certain drills from this instructor, right? So I've learned 50 hours of of this from this particular instructor, right? So now. Uh, I take my 50 hours and now I put more work to it. So say like six months down the line or eight months or a year down the line, you know, and then I can start applying these techniques in a ready fashion. So I, I'm certified, but I'm not certified to teach. Yeah. So you, That's you, the difference. Yeah. So now you got to go back to that instructor so he can review what he certified you for to learn, right? And then you can say, oh, you got this, this, this. You're certified only to teach this. Period. Period. Yeah. And then you get a little certificate that says you're certified to teach this, 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 this. And that's it. Right? But a lot of people don't do that. They no. say, oh, you're certified to teach. You're an instructor. Yeah, just like that. Just you like know? that. So I'm, I'm definitely not discouraging people to do seminars because um, without, without my instructors, without me going to my instructor's seminars, and and learning and learning stuff. all the time, you know, a lot of cool stuff we yeah, picked up man, over the years. A lot of stuff we learned. So much a information. A lot of concepts. Yeah. A lot of fighting drills and things yep. like that. Yeah. A lot of fighting concepts and but different it's, skills. It's, it's not awesome. that I I, I I learn it and then I come I come back to the school and then teach we, it. Then we work it. Yeah, I, we you work don't it. you can't do that. You can't learn something that you barely even got a grasp on and come back to the school and teach what you what, what you think you know, which you have no idea of knowing, and you shouldn't be teaching that. So if there's teachers that are doing that, shame on you. Well, we know there's teachers doing that. Huh? We know there's teachers Yeah, that there are, are that. there are, and, yeah. and shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> yeah. Shame on you, but. Shame on you, because we know who you are. But, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. But if you're, if you're taking these techniques and you're going home and you're going to the school and you're drilling them on your own mm -hmm. for a year, for two years, if you're drilling them for, a certain amount of time, you bring them back to your instructor and say, is this okay? Can you critique this? Can you let me know what's wrong? Can you let me know what's going on? And they're correcting it for you and then they're sending it, you know, they send you on your way and say, you're good, you're, you're doing it right, yeah. you're working hard, you're putting you're putting work to it. Now now apply it. Now now work it during your sparring, work it during your self-defense, yeah. work it during no mind drills, you know, and put it together, put it to use. Yeah, because that's what you used to do back in the 1600s in feudal China and, you know, you would have to travel up the mountain to the to the instructor and train with him for like three days, and he was like, "All right, off you be go. gone. Be, <laughs> be gone from my presence. Be gone. <laughs> Come back in six months. Right? Be gone. And you off have to you go, go back to way to the village and practice for six months, and then he would come back. You would come back, and then he would assess you, and either he smack you in the mouth and say, "No, nope, that's not right," or he give you some more techniques, and then, you know. And then you go back for another six months and you pray and train for another six months. You know? So, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I got, I got to, to say, say about, about that. that. Right. So, so, not not really bad, right? So, we, we, we did a lot of good, um, a lot of good educational, uh, informative stuff and positive stuff. I'm trying to get out there and get some positive yeah, yeah. stuff. <laughs> but we also did stuff that's not... Uh, that's understood but not talked about because this is stuff that should already be known. Yeah, and that's true. And you know a lot of and a lot of teachers don't know it. Don't a lot of teachers it. just teach for them. Because well, well, not only that because the instructors don't have the experience. As some of the instructors that have a lot of fighting experience don't know how to teach. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> oh my God! Did so you, just you, because you're a good you, fighter, you said that in a nutshell. That does not mean that you are a good teacher. Yeah, man. And that, just because you are a good teacher, that doesn't mean that you can whip ass. That's a double-edged sword. That's right a double-edged sword. So, if you want to be a great instructor, you have to have both, right? So, if you're a good fighter, right, go learn how to teach. If you're a good fighter, go learn how to teach. You know what I'm saying? So not everybody just can open a school and and have all these people, you know, champ, you know, it takes a lot of understanding 
to learn how to cheat because people perceive information in different ways. You know, he's like, I throw that punch and he's not getting it. And if you can't convey how to do it the way you're you're teaching people how to do it, then you, you know, you're wasting time. You're wasting your time. You're wasting time and you're wasting people's money. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and then you'll start to lose students. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, or you know what? Or you may not start to lose students. And then what's going to happen is, is you're going to be teaching bad martial arts. People are going to get hurt. Because, you know, well, the thing is, is and it falls on your shoulders. He can't, the, that instructor won't be able to convey what he wants. So then what he has to do now, he has to water down to make it easy so that the people can do it. Yep. So yep. then you are turn this hardcore fighter. And then all of a sudden, year by year, he starts doing that, and then it turns into Mick Dojo. <laughs> Go uh, and Mick Dojo. Dojo. Because <laughs> or Burger Kwan. I don't want to, you know, I don't yeah, want to discriminate. I don't want to discriminate. That, uh, because <laughs> that particular person didn't take the time to learn how to teach and convey to different types of people. Right? So now, wasn't this a good, a good dude, dude? I'm dude. liking this, man. Good educational this. show today, yeah. right? So now you got the other flip side. You got the one who's a, a great instructor. You know, can can teach people. You know how to do all this kind of stuff. You know, but never got into a fight ever. Yeah. So you yeah. know, it's all theory. Yeah. I don't want to go to a doctor that has just read books <laughs> and never took a knife out on somebody and tried to, you know, try to put them back together again. Yeah. You know, nope. Yeah. I don't want to learn from somebody that just fought in the school. No, man. You know, That's and all again, compliant. I had the opportunity to fight in competition. You dragged me all over the goddamn place to fight in people's schools. Yes, I did. You, know, you had brought people into the school to whip our asses. Yes, I did. You know, uh, you know, and people got invited to come spar with us and fight with us. And, you know, oh, I want to fight with you guys. And, you know, to come, you know. You know, to, to, to beat us up and stuff like that. You know, so it was, it was sparring weekly, weekly ass whippings, <laughs> <laughs> you know, weekly ass whippings. You know, uh, and you get to experience, you know, different types of people, different flavors. You get to experience different types of ass you know, whippings. Different types of ass whippings. You know, you go to competition <laughs> and stuff like that. And hey, you're looking pretty buff on this on this. Who? On the set. Me? Yeah, no, it's the, it's the sweatshirt, man. Is it? It's the sweatshirt. sweatshirt. Yeah. Like, you look big, man. Uh, I look like a little little scrunny Jew next to <laughs> you. I got to swell up a little I, bit. I, I just got done working out, I gotta, so, so I got the I gotta pump. Sw- the, I got the pump a little the, bit. The pump is still going. I got to turn like this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I definitely oh. want to do some. Woo, look at all them people. I definitely want to do some shout outs, man. We got people. a lot of people here. Look. Look, Lloyd's on. I'm on. I'm Lloyd's watching. On. Trevor Taylor's on. He was watching. I'm not sure if he's still watching. Hope his foot's doing well. He rolled his ankle. No. Yeah, that sucks. So I uh, hope he's feeling better. That's it. Um, Kevin Castine, how are you, sir? Hope everything is well. Uh, Chris Roman, brother, I'm glad to see you on here. Thank you for being on here. I appreciate yes. it. Dude, Warms thank you my for, heart. Thank you for the good tippets of, of information yeah, that you're dropping. this guy. Because you're on the job. And all you, the time. And see? And this is a guy that is on the job and has experienced certain things in the field. Yeah, so... You know what I'm saying? Thanks for your so input. that is the person I'm going to listen to. Yep. I'm not going to listen to the person, well, this is what's supposed to happen. <laughs> thank, you know? So thank you for your input, I want to listen Chris. to somebody, yeah, this is what happened on the job, and it smacks my name out. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, JP, for showing up. Uh, Zong Shur, Bian, thank you so yes. much for uh, for being on and watching. Uh, Yadi's on, our little Shaolin Ratita. Thank you very much for being on and being a Yadi? part of it. That's Yadi? Yeah, that's Yadi. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, see? Beyonce, go Beyonce uh, with the little rat symbol. <laughs> uh, Batman's on. What's up, James, dude? what's up, going? What's up? Hope everything is well. Um, Fernand Soto. Fernand Soto, yeah, from Puerto Rico. Ah. Um, Beyond. So, Beyond, hope everything is well. Uh, and Sifu Gomez Sifu is Gomez. well. What's up, brother? Sifu hope Gomez. everything is well. Um, let's see. And again, Roman all over the place. Yeah. I'm so happy. Uh, my Simu. wife Rachel. Simu, how are you, baby? Um, Treya Scott's on. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being a part of it. Um, so happy. Look, and Sheehan, Sheehan and Andrew's watching. You miss it, man. We advertise. We for advertise you. for you. We advertise. <laughs> Message unite. Um, Zong Sher, I'm so happy. He wrote so much here, man. It's so awesome. Yes. And Mike's watching. Mike actually came to the seminar. So Mike, thank you very much for coming to the seminar number one, mm-hmm. um, and being in an uncomfortable zone and still enjoying yourself. So thank you very much for that. Yes. And number two, um, thanks for being on the show. Please spread the word. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, or I'll find you. 
<laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Um, Emin Hendrix is on here. Nice. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Uh, Mike again. Mike again. Um, and Sigu Mariano Torres. Thank yes. you so much for being on. Beyond. Yeah. Thank you for watching. And thank you. Mark Lee's watching. Sigu Mark Lee. Yeah. He was, a, he he was a, a person that we featured uh, last in the week? last episode yeah. last week. Last week. He was an awesome, awesome guest. Awesome talk. It gives good tidbits of information. Sarge is on. Sarge. Smith. Hope he's feeling good from today's private. <laughs> he did good. So, uh, so that's it. So, we so got, Mr. Roman, what do you say? He said, you might have to teach the same technique 10 different ways to 10 different people. And that's being, being a, a teacher. teacher. And yeah. he has 20, 24 years. Wow. Yeah. 24 years on the job. On the job, yeah, That's dude. 24 years of putting people in uh, in handcuffs and smacking them around. And on bars. And, and, and on bars and throwing them in cock Gun bars whipping, and stuff. Man. And, <laughs> <laughs> no, this, I'm sure. This, no, he's, he's, a, he's a great yeah, cop. But yeah. this is a man when, when I, I remember talking to him. And, I mean, I guess down south they could, they could wear guns and they could wear all sorts of stuff. But this man, he just had guns everywhere. <laughs> He, it's just amazing. He's oh, just, goodness. Yeah, he's just, he's just an animal. He's like Mad Max. He's it? Mad Max. <laughs> if, if there was an apocalypse, that's the man that you want hanging out and standing next to. Oh, goodness. Because I'm sure he's, he's... like, all right, guys. All right, yeah. I'm okay, sure... Disarm yourself. He's just like, eh, <laughs> I'm eh, sure, eh, I'm eh. sure he's... He's pulling guns out of his ears. Yeah, I'm sure he's fully <laughs> equipped 24-7. He is definitely the man. So. Oh, man, that's hilarious. Chris, this one's for you, brother. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so um, thanks for being very, on very, the show. Very nice man, very humble yes. gentleman. Yes. But don't poke the bear. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't poke don't the bear. Don't poke the damn bear. bear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, don't poke the bear. <laughs> that's so damn funny. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Oh, so, goodness. Uh, uh, so, so we ain't ready for that yet, are we? Oh, dude, we're getting close. No. Yeah, man, we're getting close. No. Yeah, look, eight fifty one, my Damn. man. I'm telling you, we had a great time today. Yeah. So we got we got to be like Joe Roman, man. Make three hour podcasts. Three hour podcast. The man makes a three Bro, hour. Hold podcast. on, the, the man makes a lot of money. <laughs> you all want to pay me a lot of money? Dude, we can be on for as long as you want. <laughs> I'll make a three hour podcast. So yeah. <laughs> oh man. Is that Edie a swat or well, you're, you're not? not. <laughs> yeah. So. Ah! That's hilarious. Yeah, dude, but yes. he, yeah, he's the real deal. Yes. So, uh, so guys, if you haven't checked out the website yet, definitely check out the website. It's www.shanlinlohan.com. Uh, we've got lots and lots of stuff on here. We have instructors lists. So if you guys are curious about the instructors, like I always say in the videos and everything else, there is no veil. There is no secret hiding veil that mm. you won't be able to see. There's no mysticism or No, myth. yeah. You guys want to see what I do. You guys want to see what my instructors do. Go on the YouTube page. <laughs> we've got videos and videos and videos of, of techniques and stuff that we've done, demos, everything. You name it, it's on there. Mm -hmm. If anybody ever says, well, you know, I've never seen anything that you've ever done. Oh. Man, then you just haven't been on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't been on YouTube. You got no socials. You got no social skills at all. <laughs> um, we're on social media. We're all over the place, guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, check out the website. It's got a lot of good stuff on classes and everything else. It's health and wellness, lion dance. We've been doing lion dance all year round. And if Sifu slides over just a little bit, hey. you'll see our live chat button. Yep. Guys, we have a live chat button. If so you, you guys... want to talk to the man, yep, the you myth, can just... the legend, at any time, 24-7. Well, not 24-7 yeah, because you he, I'll, I'll pick it up at like 4, 3 o'clock in the morning. I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll email you, you and know? you can check that out later. Yes. But if you guys need yeah. anything... You guys want to chat right away, you can chat right away with me. You can click the button and chat, and it should come up on my phone. If it doesn't, I apologize, but I will get back to yeah, you so immediately. Yeah, so we have contact all, all over the place. We have the live chat. We have the contact button. You know, uh, anything you want, we, you know, uh, every page has a, a way you can email us and get information out to us, and we get information right back to you. Uh, and this is what instructors need to do nowadays in this day and age. And people aren't doing it. And be up on your social media yeah, game. Man. Yeah, definitely. Be up on it. You know, I'm trying new things all the time with this live chat. I already had four or five hits. Mm -hmm. And I've already had people come down and people chat and yes. talk about stuff. And, yeah, it's just, you know what? If you're not, if you're not up on what's happening nowadays... You're going to get left in the dust, man. And it's really, really important, especially yep. for the martial arts. So here, I have a little I have a little tidbit of uh, of story to talk to you about, which I thought was real damn funny. And all the martial artists out there, keep your ears open for the next five minutes or three minutes of the story. If not, I don't care. But <laughs> if you don't want it, you don't want it. You're going to tell it anyway. But I'm going to tell it anyway. <laughs> so I uh, 
the story goes, this guy came into class, the guy came into the school today. It's not a joke, right? So the guy came into the school telling me how he remembered how his wife was training like 20 years ago in Tai Chi that I was teaching. Great. Wonderful. Okay. He came to class a couple times. He looked really familiar. So then he's like telling me, so, you know, when are your Tai Chi classes? So I told him that Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 to 8 o'clock. Without bad and I, Tuesday, Thursday, 7, 8 o'clock. Oh, those are really good times. He goes, but, you know, I might miss a Tuesday or two because I have a meditation class that I go to that I'm very dedicated to. And I said, that's not a problem. We teach Tai Chi, Qigong, meditation. It's all part and parcel of what we teach. He was like, well, how much does it cost? I said, 160 bucks. Right out there. Throw it out there. So if anybody ever asks questions, how much we charge? Now right you know. Now. <laughs> right. So 160 bucks, right? So 160 bucks for the Tai Chi class. That's two times a week for an hour class being instructed by the instructor or one mm. of the sifus that are there. Um, so you're not being taught by a beginner teaching Tai Chi because mm -hmm. that should never happen, right? Look how messy those brooches are in the back there. That picture, that's that was really that's bad. Ambience. That's ambiance. That's ambiance? Yes. That was messy. That's, that's the ambiance <laughs> of the school. That's, that's messy. They get used. That's messy. Uh, so, so yeah, so I, I told him how much the price was. And then he goes, well, do you do, uh, do you do, you know, as, you know, um, do you do per classes? And I go, absolutely not. He goes, why don't you? I said, because I want a commitment. I want a commitment. Mm. I want you to come down. I want you to show me what you want that you want to learn. That's that's my that my commitment is you coming down and you're paying me for the full month. He goes, well, what happens if I miss a couple of classes? I go, so you miss a couple of classes. He goes, but then I'm paying that money. I go, yeah. He goes, well, that doesn't seem right. I said, well, do you have car insurance? And he goes, yeah. I go, well, do you uh, do you drive your car every single day? He goes, just about. I said, you go on vacation for about a week or two? He goes, yeah. Does anybody drive your car? He goes, no. I said, do you call up the insurance company and say, hey, you know what? I didn't drive my car for two weeks, so I got to pay you the full pit premium? And he looked at me and he goes, that's a point taken. I go, yeah. I said, I'm no less professional than your insurance company. I'm no less professional than any of you out there that have your own businesses, that are doing printing, that are doing surgical stuff, that are doing acupuncture. Mm -hmm. Martial arts schools and martial art owners should not be any less professional. And if you are, shame on you. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you need to sell out. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, so that's the story. So the story is, is be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Be Don't confident. Short change your teaching. Be confident in what you're doing. Know and, what you're worth. And know what you're worth. And I know that I'm worth more than that. But you know what? I'm trying to be fair to the people out there. And I do want people to come in and train and everything yes. else. But I also want a commitment. And I will take nothing less than what I'm worth. Mm -hmm. So I'm not doing per class nonsense. Because to me. People right. are like, well, you, you, you business and stuff like that. So you got to remember, martial go, arts. Go, go, Mr. Pro. <laughs> <laughs> So the martial art industry uh, is something that is needed, right? Because people need to know how to defend themselves. Yeah, but again, it's not a necessity like your car insurance, your mortgage and stuff like that. Yes, so it is. It's an, yes, it is. In so today's day, it is. It is, but it's an extracurricular. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I agree. So you as instructors do have the right to pick your clientele and what kind of clientele that you want to teach. Mm, you know what I'm saying? That's nice. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, you, you have a place of... To uh, the dojo or the quan or, or the gym or wherever, and people will come to you to to learn whatever you have to teach them, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not like you're gonna pick a homeless person off the off the street and start teaching them martial arts, which would be kind of cool. It would help some people out, you know, but you don't have that type of program. You know what I'm saying? So your program is for people that want to make that commitment. You know what I'm saying? So Aww. it should be, oh, lady, little man. <laughs> you know? So you should have that mindset that the, I want that top-notch clientele. Yeah, man. Even if you have people that are, you know, that can't afford it. So don't be, you know, don't be a, a jackass. Help people out, but don't shortchange yourself. Without a doubt, man. You know, so you're in the business of helping people help the community, but you're in a business. Yeah, and you, you know, know what, what and that's and that's the whole thing. So a lot of people shortchange themselves. A lot of people shortchange uh, who they are as martial artists, and they don't believe that they're uh, that they're worth it. And unfortunately, when you have people that learn for three years and then they open up a school, they don't know what they're doing, and that gives martial artists who've been training for a really long time a bad name because a lot of these people that are uneducated, hey, so the school moved up around the block. Let me go to this school. Let me join this school because it's easier. 
right? Parents get lazy. They just want to drop off as close as possible to the house. Yes. If that's why you're picking a school, shame on you as a parent because it's your responsibility because your kid has no idea what they're getting yes. into. Or I've, I've had people that are like, your school is too hard. And, yeah, you know, I'll pick something easier. Now, other people is like, well, why don't you, why don't you make it accessible for everybody? It is accessible for everybody. We open the door, you come in. <laughs> <laughs> what you do, what you choose to do after that <laughs> is your choice. But this is, you know, it's like if you're going into uh, 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 an Italian restaurant, you go in and say, oh, y'all ain't got Chinese food here? I want Chinese food. <laughs> and it's like, oh, this is the menu. So, so Chris, yeah. Roman, Chris Roman wrote something really, really. Oh, Rory Browder, what's hey, up, brother? what's up, brother? So uh, Chris Roman wrote, uh, same thing with a gym personal trainer, right? If you miss a gym session... They still have to pay for the trainer. Yes, sir. absolutely. Because they are professional and they are worth that time. That's you right. pay for that time. I have people who pay four blocks in advance. If you call me and tell me you're going to be here on a Tuesday, and we set that date, and you don't call me up, and I walk into this school for that private, bing, bing, I put a little punch hole right in that, <laughs> right in that card. Whether you're here or you're not, guess why? Because I'm here. Yep. I wasted my time, mm -hmm. and I'm going to stay here for the hour, whether you show up or not. Yep. And uh, that's how and that, that goes. And that's professionalism right there. That's how it goes. That's professionalism. Bing. You know what I'm saying? Ah. Uh, uh. So, Sifu, Sifu Ken. Hey! What are some of the questions that you'll be asking me if I'm a guest on your show? Well, you're just going to have to come on the show. It's gonna, <laughs> he's not watching here. He's over yeah. here, though. I'm gonna I'm gonna text him back. Yes, I should call him up right now and have a conversation yes. with him. So uh, that is a uh, uh, wonderful gentleman, uh, Sifu Kenneth Edwards. Yes, he yes. is. We're gonna try to get him on the show next week. Yes, so he is based out in California, I believe. Uh, he is a disciple of Sifu uh, Liam Shung of the Eagle Claw System. And uh, if you have noticed, uh, people, you know, people, you know, the, you know. I'd name movies and stuff like that. I'd be like, I don't know, what kind of movie is that? Well, dude, I didn't even, yeah. when you were like, he was in Mortal Kombat. He I was, was like, in what? the original Mortal Kombat movie. He was featured in Mortal Kombat movie. For about, uh, like, two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but he's in the damn movie. Hell you know? yeah. He's nah. in the damn movie. He got killed by a four-armed man. Yes. Anybody nah. get killed by a four-armed man. Yes. Unless you had a Mossberg. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, so it would be, you know, very cool. To have uh, him on the to show. To have him on the, in the show. And that's what we want to do. When the feature instructors uh, get information out there. Well, he'll be the first one from California. Yes. We've been doing everybody on the East Coast. On the East Coast. So I'm he trying to get from the West Coast. So yet. I'm trying to get some people on the West Coast. So I'll definitely be uh, searching him out and yes. having a little conversation with him tonight. Ooh, it's, it's two after. Yeah. All right. So we got to get going. Uh, oh, so what? Look. What's up? What's up, guys? Good, hey, Rory. 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 Subscribe to our show, little man. Um, hope everything is he well. No more. Uh, yeah, he's, he's still is always gonna be my little brother. <laughs> um, much love, much respect. You got a beautiful family. Um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Check us out. Hey, push us, man. You in California? Get us hooked up. Oh yeah. Get us hooked up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, you know, slip the show under some doorways. <laughs> A little USB a little sticking USB under a door. Under there, saying, oh God, look at this show. Gotta check check this out the show. Out. These check guys, guys are a bomb. Yeah. All right, so uh, guys, again, thank you so much for uh, everything. Let's go back to uh, big bobbleheads. Yes. Big bobbleheads. Big bobbleheads. I'm getting better at this, right? Yes, you are leaps and bounds. You just saying that? <laughs> Mother. <Is it? laughs> so guys, thank you very much for being a part of the show. Uh, thank you for uh, for for everything. Thank you for subscribing again. Follow us on Facebook www.facebook.com forward slash authentic Shaolin kung fu. Uh, follow us on the uh, uh, on YouTube, uh, www.youtube.com forward slash Authentic Shaolin Kung Fu. Follow us on Instagram, um, www.instagram.com forward slash Shaolin Lohan. Check us out. Be a part of it. Be a part of uh, be, be a part, part of, of a movement. Be, be a part, part of the coalition. coalition. So get the coalition. <laughs> <laughs> so guys. Train real, get real. Every day of your life. Yes. All the instructors out there, show by example, lead by example. Train real, get real, and... Shout it out! Woo!
ultimate 